It is a beautiful day for an arts and crafts project. And what we're going to make is a tiny sketchbook that we can decorate. And when you open it, it goes like this. You open it, you have this, this, and you have this. So sometimes it folds in one direction and sometimes in the other, but you always have a rectangular surface. And you don't have to glue or sew or anything. It's just you have to fold and cut in the right place. And I first did it. It took me several tries to figure it out because I'd seen it, but I didn't have a <clears throat> template. I just had to figure it out, which is a good process to figure this kind of thing out. Uh, this... Honestly, it's simply a card of the Strathmore cards like this. So you can use any kind of paper and you may want to do your first one on regular printer paper, maybe. My, um, since I've already done three, I can trust myself to use a beautiful piece of handmade paper from Kelsey Pike. So the first thing, make sure you use a paper that takes folding because there are some gorgeous papers I have that don't really like to be folded. Because this is handmade paper, I have very clean hands. I don't want to use a bone folder because it's still handmade and delicate, but you could use a bone folder. The other reason I'm not using a bone folder is that I forgot to bring it in this room. Um, this is my cutter that I sometimes use as a makeshift bone folder. So you have, you cut it like this. <clears throat> I mean, you fold it like this. Then you fold it again in half. Again, you could use a tool or your clean, dry hands. <clears throat> and then you fold it again in half. Handmade paper makes it, at the same time, a little more difficult to do, but also more forgiving because you have all these deckled edges and you don't really need to be super precise. And you know that I'm not into being super precise. I think of myself as creative, not precise. I would not make a good engineer. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides. Now the trick is to cut in just the right places. And this are where we need to cut. We have, a, it's basically where you cut three sides. You cut here, then you cut like this, okay? <clears throat> Make sure you don't use your good scissors. My mom from early on taught me that Paper ruins scissors. If you didn't know that, now you know. I don't like how paper is cut with scissors anyways, because I can't be straight. And even though I am not precise, I don't like cuts that aren't straight. <laughs> so what I usually do is I use something like this. I fold and I use something like this. But it's tricky, so I'm not going to use it because it's tricky on handmade paper and it's tricky because you do have to stop. Wait, am I doing it right? Yes. You cut like this. See how it's not straight? I don't like that, but whatever. <clears throat> Drawing not straight is fine, but cutting paper. I guess you could um, tear it, but I don't trust myself. So cut here, cut here, and then as you fold, you kind of have to figure it out. All right, so we go like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, and like this. And then, you know, you have a temporary way of holding it tight. It could be a clip 
which of course I don't have right here. It could be a, a, a ribbon, whatever works. Another good option, which I am not prepared to complete now, is to attach, is to glue a piece of thick paper here and here. And then, in fact, that's, that's what I recommend. It could even be this paper. Let's see. I could basically, oh no, it's the wrong size. <laughs> But uh, any kind of thicker paper, glued here and glued here, and then you're fine. Or you could just live dangerously. I mean, if you're not traveling, if you're keeping it in your... But what, what I recommend then is to, since it's so small, to give it a theme. And, and the theme can be announced on your cover. Okay? So, let me do this so it stays down. See how it's not even there, but it doesn't matter so much because everything is not that even. I don't know. There's some things that bother me when they're not even and some things that don't. Sketchbook edges, so, so. Okay. <clears throat> now, if you're going to do something on the cover, as much as I prefer watercolor and love watercolor, probably don't want to use watercolor unless it's really going to just sit on your desk. But even then, just any little splash will ruin it. So you could use a waterproof ink or my despised acrylics. I always say bad things about acrylics because it's colored glue, but because it's colored glue, it can be really helpful in situations where you don't want to um, ruin, you know, if water is a possibility or something like this. So, let's say I want to do a theme of moths. As uh, many of you know, I've created this palette with the Kateri and we named one color moth. I'm not going to use it here, but that kind of, she named it moth. And uh, I was thinking green earth, but of course, Kateri has a bigger view of nature than I do. And she came up with this moth, which is beautiful. So if we want to have a theme of moths, we could paint, draw a moth in the cover. And it doesn't have to be super realistic, obviously. Um, and But because it's a cover, and because it's handmade paper, and because I don't want to mess up too much, I am going to draw it first, using up as much of the cover as I can. So the the moth that this color that we created most resembles is a luna moth. And I don't know why I can do this side much more easily than I can do this side. And this is a problem with painting moths on, in this direction. I like them in a profile better because I don't have to worry so much about making the two sides the same. Now, Luna moths have this long tail, and the shape of this uh, page doesn't allow it so much. But let's do our best. Let's pretend it's got a shorter tail. So this is a squatty moth. And I can see here how completely wrong I've done this. I don't know. Handmade papers don't usually like. Erasing. Her name is Kelsey Pike. I don't really have a relationship with her. You know how some sellers are friendly and you end up talking? And she's not, really. I've never had a conversation with her, but I do keep buying her paper because I really like it. And it's reasonably priced, and I just, um, I really like it, mostly. The fact that it's reasonably priced gives me an excuse to buy more than I need. 
it takes watercolor in a unique way so you can't expect it to be like um, arches and she says that she uses different kinds of different amounts it's always the same sizing i don't know what it is but she says depending on the paper it's a different amount but so far every paper i bought from her some is thicker some is thinner but all of it takes watercolor nicely now we'll see how it takes ink <laughs> What do you think? Ink? Or... Hmm, I'm tempted by the acrylic because it will be less powerful. It's a very delicate paper. These are the acrylics. Oh, well, this might decide it. All right, I'll show you. I've given away a lot of them because they do get ruined over time and I don't want to waste it, but these, hmm, we might enjoy iridescent later. Quinn Gold, of course. What do they use? Oh, it's a mixture. 48 and 150. Burnt sienna. So I need some kind of a reddish, yeah, burnt orange is good for the edges and then the green and then um, some pinkish yellowish oh violet green interference would be fine right, what if i fall in love with all right let's take a little bit of white and a little bit of quin gold okay and then i'll have this now Unlike watercolor, once acrylic dries, that's it. You can't reactivate it. So let's start with the lightest. I am going to mix a little bit of white with a tiny bit of Quin Gold. Ooh, not a tiny bit. Oh, wow. And then you shouldn't use your best brushes because famously acrylic ruins them, but I don't really have any really good brushes that I like using right now. Not at this size. All right, so I have this kind of orangey, Now I'm kind of committing to a tiny booklet of moths. Oh well, I don't know what I'm gonna do with all that. I guess I could put it in a Ziploc bag or just paint with acrylic the rest of the day. Then we do a little bit of burnt orange for good it's kind of reddish paper that's Paper tends to be more forgiving of acrylic than of watercolor, and clearly this works. This is fluid acrylic, so you could, but you always have to be careful with acrylic about adding water, because if you add too much water, the binder won't hold. I don't know if that makes sense, but you need a certain amount of binder for the pigment to adhere. And it's not like watercolor that you can add as much water as you want. With acrylic, 
you can add a little bit of water, but after that you need to add clear binder, which I may actually have. But. All right, so this is green gold, Oro Verde, is it? This is what happens with acrylic and you can't use this. It's plastic, it's glue, but is there any? Hmm. No, it's all dried out. Oh, well. How are we going to make that color? Do I have any blue? I think so. All right, Taylor Blue with some of this should work well. While I have some clean white, I am going to add it here and here. Curious about how many of you have acrylic. I have it from when I first started painting, so it's not bad that some of it is dry. It's lasted a while. But um, I once took an online course that was a multimedia course and I bought all kinds of supplies that I never used again until now. So let's say we have some Taylor Blue here. And we add some of this. All right, we wanna add more of that, but I, wash the brush. I can be kind of lazy about washing the brush. What do you think? No, it's still too blue. That's the thing with Taylor Blue is so powerful. All right, we'll call this good enough. Well, a little bit more. A little bit messed up there. All right. So now this paper doesn't look rough, but it is rough in a fun way that allows your watercolor to stick, but also opens the fibers in a way that it's not doing it so much here. But it allows a little bit of that, um, they call it sparkle. I've seen it referred to as sparkle, which is basically the white of the paper showing through a wash. This is a lot um, thicker. I mean, it's different. But the beauty of this, even though it's not as charming as watercolor, is that you can touch it without worrying if your hand is slightly wet or if a drop of water falls on it, it's not going to bleed. <laughs> and that's pretty major. And I could put a little bit. All right, so it does do the wet on wet effect. Uh, I really should use these paints more. They, the fluid acrylics were created to resemble watercolor in some ways. They can be quite transparent, at least some of them. 
So this can be my moth book. Mm -hmm. Not bad. And I'm going to try and paint a moth in it. If not every day, then at least regularly. And I, I hope you make yourself a little sketchbook like this, you know? Again, it's just like a bunch of folding and then three cuts. Cut here and a cut here. I hope you enjoyed it.